this lighting I have going on? Am I in the shadows? Am I in the light? Who knows? <laughs> okay, <laughs> enough. Good morning, friends and adventurers. Heather here from Heather's Hikes and Adventures. Are you getting sick of this view yet? <laughs> That's right, I'm back here for another morning because I was still in the area and I had such a great time sleeping on the pier. The last time I decided one more night would be fine before I moved on. But that's not what this video is gonna be about. This video, I'm gonna be discussing the pros of my new setup that I'm not highlighting very well right now since I just woke up and started throwing pillows and blankets everywhere <laughs> and made my coffee. And the pros and cons of the setup I've been using and see if there's one that I prefer over the other, which one I think I'm gonna continue with, um, you know, so on and so forth. See if maybe I can break it down a little in case you guys are going back and forth with what kind of layout would work best for your uh, situation. So we'll just discuss a little bit about what I personally use my minivan camper for real quick in case you're not familiar with the channel and kind of how I travel, camp, and live in it. And then we'll discuss the pros and cons of each of my two setups. That, for the record, spoiler alert, I love Bo. <laughs> but we are gonna get into it a little more. So let's do that now. The morning light is so tricky to film in, but you know what? I persist in doing it anyways, don't I? So, First, I wanted to talk about the current setup that you guys are probably the most familiar with if you've been watching my recent videos where I essentially am just using my third row bench seat in my Dodge Grand Caravan, just the one that comes stock, and then I'm just kind of leveling it out with foam mattress topper, blankets, and just essentially turning that into my bed and then keeping the rest of the interior as my living space. Um, obviously that has <laughs> benefits and it has drawbacks. So I really haven't experienced too many cons that have made it, you know, unpleasant to work with. I love all the extra space that it gives me, which is the first pro. And actually, before I go any further, what I'm gonna do is insert a clip for those of you who are not familiar with my current setup, um, instead of the one that I'm testing out right now, so that you can see what I'm talking about first. So let's do that and then I'll be right back. So as you can see, there is a ton of space, which is the biggest pro to having that as my setup. I mean, I just feel like it's so much roomier. I remember when I very first started using that setup after having the bed going the lengthwise with my cot, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've doubled my living space. And I also love that when I have both side doors open, I can just enter and exit whichever side I want. There's no obstruction. I get this nice kind of open breeze going through and it's just, I just feel kind of like the outdoors is more inside if that makes sense. Um, it just feels more of a very kind of outdoor living space, which is kind of what you want when you're camping, I think. So I love that about it. Everything is right within reach. 
I love having the separate trunk space kind of behind the backs of the seats because it keeps my heavier items like my fridge secured. I don't have to worry about it, you know, trying to fling forward in an accident. Um, I also like that it kind of separates my trunk space from my living space so that I can kind of keep stuff separated if I want to, which interestingly enough is also a con because I do like having the ability to kind of go um, out the back if I want and having that kind of open flow from the front to the back to without the separation. So, you know, hey, we're never completely satisfied, right? <laughs> but another huge pro to my current setup is that, um, I can keep the bed as the bed pretty much all the time and still have three passengers with me. And as you know, I have three kiddos, so it kind of works out perfectly without me having to take apart everything. I can keep everything in the trunk the way it is, <clears throat> my bed the way it is, my under the bed storage the way it is. Essentially, I can be ready to go with just removing the few things that I have in the living space. And you know, of course my clothes and that kind of stuff. And then I can pop the seats back up. I can take the kiddos around during the week. And then when it's time for me to head out again, it only takes me a few minutes to get set back up because all I have to do is stow the seats, put my rugs back in, my jackery, my table, just a couple of items, my storage unit, and I'm good to go. So honestly, if I needed to be out in like 15 minutes, I probably could be. So that's another huge pro, probably almost tied for first place, honestly. <clears throat> and I mean, I just like it. It's, it's nice having the space. It's nice having it all open. What can I say? I love the setup, as you guys know, and as I've raved about before. And if you haven't seen my tour yet, make sure you check that out because I do go into detail more about where I keep everything, how I store stuff, and where I keep what. So definitely watch that. Okay, so that's where we're at currently with things. Now, there's always downsides to everything. So let's talk about that and why I even decided to try another setup in the first place if I love mine so much, right? So one of the things that I am not the craziest about is, <laughs> which became glaringly apparent, and I kind of knew in the back of my mind it would be an issue, was my first uh, freezing temp camping <laughs> in Terra in the new setup. The new old setup, if you will. This is going to get so confusing. We'll just say the third row bench seat one. Not the one that I'm in right now. The biggest con for me is that it's the third row bench. I mean, it's not an actual bed. So, you know, you've got the gaps on the side for the seat. You know, it's it's got some draftiness going on. I'm using the head and the footwell, as I call them, which is like right up against the window. So there's not a lot of insulation that I can do for my feet and head, which as you know, kind of retains and lets off the most heat. So, um, you know, it's not ideal when you're trying to stay warm to say the least. And granted, I live in Florida most of the time. That's where I'm overnighting that's where I'm tri um, you know doing my road trips for, you know the majority of the time is within the state of Florida still so it's not like you know I'm in Colorado or Wyoming or you know really having to deal with snow and ice and sleet and all of that so it's not a huge issue granted and it's not like you know I worry about my survival and it would be a different story if I was you know full-timing and I was literally in it all the time and couldn't escape the cold um, in the winter, then that would be more of an issue. But it is hard to stay warm. And since my bed is much smaller and the living space is much more open, it's also hard to retain that heat once I get warm. So the second I move or take off those covers or my little, you know, cozy insulation, I'm freezing again. <laughs> So it's definitely harder to stay warm. Um, that means I'm using the electric blanket more. 
that means, you know, um, I'm having to try to regulate myself a little more than I would otherwise. So I kind of knew that if I want to be venturing more north <clears throat> and if I'm going to be doing more cold weather camping and I don't want to just confine myself to Florida in the winters going forward either. You know, I'm definitely going to be getting more into the mountains in the falls and winters, so I am going to be experiencing colder temps more often. And I wanted to make sure I had a way to stay warmer. So that was an issue for me, and I didn't really have a good solution for it. So I decided, you know what, let's try a different setup. And I'm going to be honest with you, my con list, super short. That's literally the only con. <laughs> I don't have any others. Like I said, if I was full time, I would probably want to stretch out more and maybe get tired of having a smaller sleeping space. But I don't move. I I shift a lot in my sleep, but I don't move a ton, like, you know, rolling around, going from one end to another. So I don't need a ton of sleeping space. So really, my only con is the temperature control aspect of it. Um, so let's get into my new setup and talk about that a little bit. I kind of look mysterious right now, don't I? Every time I take a moment pause here in filming and resume, I've got different lighting to work with. Okay, let's get into the pros and cons. What I can tell so far of my current setup. I've only been testing it a few days, so I'm still learning it and getting situated and I'm sure I'm going to be tweaking and moving things around a bit as one does in a no build, which is one of the reasons I love having one. But a few pros and cons stick out to me immediately. So let's discuss those. And this will be much shorter since obviously I'm not as familiar as the space yet, but I do want to show it to you a little bit better. So. You saw it a little bit in the intro teaser, but let's get a closer look now. and quick plug in case you were wondering where I was filming that. It was at Fort DeSoto Park, which is very close to where I am right now. And I've done a couple videos on it, so check those out. <laughs> but let's talk about this setup now. As you can see, it is well lived in at the moment. You can see my WeatherTech window coverings in the back there. I actually didn't even use my back covering because I wanted to watch the bridge all night. In fact, I'm going to insert a quick clip of that so you can see how cool it looks at night. Okay, no more tangents. Let's get to the meat and potatoes here. So the biggest pro. Now, I haven't been in as 
cold attempts yet, but I did sleep in it in 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so it was definitely chilly. And it definitely is going to keep me warmer. The fact that the bed takes up so much more space and I'm able to generate that body heat once I'm under the covers or in my sleeping bag, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a second, makes the space warmer so I can kind of move around a little bit without instantly feeling a draft of icy air. <laughs> I definitely stayed more comfortable. I didn't even use my heated blanket at all. And because the bed takes up so much more space, um, I don't have all of the excess open drafty living space that I love so much for living space when it's warmer and I want that breeze and openness is it acts as a great nice cozy insulator so I have more cozy space and less drafty space so it's a little easier to get moving in the mornings which you know is very important if you know you want to get moving in the mornings you might not and that's cool too I can make coffee from bed because I have a little table over the bed again which I love so I can literally just reach down, which my Jackery's under my bed now. Um, it's funny, all of the things that I like about this setup are also things I don't like about it. Um, so you'll hear the same things I'm listing as pros, as cons in a minute probably. But I like that I can just reach down, plug in my tea kettle, um, have my setup right here over the bed, make coffee without even having to, you know, actually get out and start moving around. So that's great. Um, but I also don't like that I do have to get under the bed to get in and out of the jackery. It's not quite as easy to access if I need to do stuff when I'm outside the van. It's just not as easily accessible. If I want to move it out to, you know, swap it for the little one to go, you know, cook with the big one out on a picnic table, that's more of an ordeal. And it's more of an ordeal in general to access under the bed storage I found. I love having everything just kind of, you know, able to grab, pull out a drawer, reach behind the seat, get something. So having to actually, you know, get underneath there and be able to see what you're getting and pull it out. It's great for space. I can store like double or triple the stuff underneath if I need to, but it is harder to get to. So I can get to everything I need still from inside or outside. It just might take a little more work, which I don't necessarily love. I talked about how much I love having more bed space to keep me warm. I also don't like having so much bed space. I think maybe if I hadn't gotten such a huge cot because mine's 30 by 80 instead of the more normal like 25-ish by like 75-ish. Um, you know, the more traditional cot size or toddler size bed, pretty much. Um, which again, I don't need all the sleeping space. So I kind of don't like the fact that all my living space is pretty much bed and I don't have as much room to move around. Now let's talk about the biggest con, which is kind of in line with the whole space thing. I'm back to only having one way in and out of my living space, essentially. I'm back to using just the passenger side um, sliding door pretty much to get in and out now. I can't just walk through. I can't go in or out either side as easily. I don't have that kind of versatility anymore because it's the bed. I can open the door just fine. It's not obstructed. I could roll in or out of bed if I wanted, but it's, it's, I mean, I'm not going to. So essentially I'm back down to just having one way in or out. And that cuts way down on versatility, um, depending on how I want to be situated at camp. You know, if it's easier to open up that way, I can't anymore. If it's easier to plug up that way, if I have hookups, I can't anymore. So I'm back to being really limited again. And I just don't, I wish I could combine the two floor plans, honestly, keep that open space and have the bed. I guess that's why people end up with bigger rigs. <laughs> 
because honestly, if I had like six inches more of space this way for the bed and could actually put in a real bed, I think that would make a big difference. But that's where we're at. So where does this leave me going forward, you ask? Well, I've got a plan. This is going to be my cold weather setup. And my other one is going to be my everything else. <laughs> Unless I need the extra under bed storage, um, which I do like being able to keep all of my outdoor living space kind of just tucked neatly in there. It is kind of harder to access the clam and the chair and everything on initial setup and take down in the other one. But that only takes an extra few seconds when I'm at camp anyways. And I don't use my outdoor stuff every time. So going forward when it's cold, I'm going to stick with this to keep me warm. And I'm going to stick with the other setup the rest of the time so I don't have to sacrifice my space. But this breakdown was super helpful for me. I hope it was for you as well. Maybe it kind of shed some light on some questions you've been asking yourself if you're getting ready to set out and get started and kind of toying with which setup might work best for you. Obviously, if you're taller than me, a respectable five foot two, you're gonna be more limited in your options anyways. So you might not have the decision, but if you do, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed kind of listening to my pros and cons and having me kind of think out loud about which layout I like the best. I hope you enjoyed seeing both my layouts. I will have a future tour of this one coming up as I familiarize myself with it a little more this winter. But check out my other tour for now. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. It means so much to me. If you found this helpful and want to see more videos like this, as well as go along with me on my hikes and adventures, make sure you're subscribed, put your notifications on so you don't miss my new videos, and I'll see you soon. Bye!